Welcome to another episode of Billy on Air, where we get to speak to construction and insurance professionals about anything to manage insurance and construction risk. Today, we have a very exciting guest. His name is Petara, all the way from down under in Australia, our first guest in Australia. And he's going to be talking about construction insurance in Australia. Petara. Thanks for joining the show and uh, welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Nayasha. It's great to be here. I'm Petara Tanuvasa, the director for Silverback Insurance and uh, a specialist in construction uh, insurance risk and uh, as a broker. That's awesome. And Mm. Petara, where in Australia are you based, by the way? Yeah, currently based in the the Gold Coast, the beautiful side of Earth. Having moved up from Melbourne uh, through the COVID period, uh, we're currently just enjoying the sunny days and the sunny weather, but I do look after uh, Australia-wide. That's awesome. And tell us a little more about Silverback Insurance. How did it start? Who do you specialize in placing risk for? Uh, Silverback Insurance was born uh, in amidst a hard market uh, during 2020. Uh, when all the COVID um, was was running rampant and all the mandates and, and lockdowns. But at the time, I was working for a renowned builder. And in my role there as a uh, senior contract administrator, I saw the, the need, a gap in the market to have an insurance broker that understands construction and has a, a clear understanding of insurance as well, just to bring these two worlds together to facilitate, advocate for both industries and bring fresh new eyes uh, into risk management and how we can mitigate risk and increase quality in the construction industry. So That's really fascinating and what a journey to go into construction and then end up in insurance. I mean, we're pretty much the same. I also came from construction, ended up in insurance, but on the software side. But I'd love to learn a little more about, you know, your background. Like, how did you end up in construction and did you just wake up one day and say, I'm going to start a company called Silverback Insurance? Uh, no, uh, it didn't happen that way. But um, what had happened was I was a broker before heading into construction. But uh, one of my valued uh, key clients, he enjoyed the way that he uh, interacted with me and the way that I managed his accounts. And we created a, a very strong relationship. And then um, uh, one Christmas, he called me in to have a meeting. And uh, he put a proposal in front of me, uh, asking me to come into his business with the idea of bringing in a, uh, a contract administrator with a background of insurance uh, compliance to implement into his business, to build the infrastructure to which he can then scale and grow his business. And that's exactly what we did. I went into his business um, and I took on that role for uh, two to three years. And, and basically uh, wore the hat of a, a risk manager uh, in a contract administration uh, role. And immediately I saw so much risk and so much um, areas where the, the insurance uh, can help uh, builders. And by unlocking some of the uh, uh, problems that, and unlocking some of the solutions that we work through, especially when he uh, adopted ProCorp, I, I immediately saw the value of what this could do to the insurance market as as well as the construction market. So uh, out of that experience, I gained the confidence to then step out on my own, uh, understanding that I now have uh, something of value that I can bring to the uh, market of both industries, the insurance and the construction to solve some of the biggest problems that we are encountering at the moment. And hopefully we can uh, help builders and help the insurance uh, as well uh, to understand uh, builders a whole lot better and for these two industries to work together to solving problems that are creating risk and at the same time to increase the quality in the projects that builders uh, deliver at the end of the day. Yeah. So Australia is quite a large market and it has many building demands, many builders that fulfill those demands. Can you help the audience understand what a contract administrator does in those building companies? Sure. So a contract administrator wears a lot of hats and um, it is a very, very important position next to the builder because 
uh, they would be the person to uh, go through the head contract uh, of each project that is uh, negotiated by the builder to be agreed upon for, for a project to be built and understanding the terms of the conditions of that main contract to then um, uh, delegate and these responsibilities, these liabilities into a subcontract agreement to then hand out to all the vendors engaged in, in building a project. So it is a contract administrator's task and role to understand the head contract terms and conditions and the ability to then uh, break that down into a subcontract agreement um, format to then uh, hand out during the tendering process to make sure that the right vendor is selected and the, the right terms and conditions are distributed to all the vendors, to all the trades and suppliers engaged in any one project. For those listening that are in North America, a head contract would be a prime contract if you're using software like uh, Procore, and a subcontract would be a commitment, uh, which most people are familiar uh, with. And then the terms and conditions in North America, we would translate those as exhibits that are attached to the contract itself. So with that in mind, Patara, um, when a person gets a head contract, in Australia and there are terms and conditions how do they communicate those terms and conditions to the subbies or subcontractors as they know sure it's um look it all comes down to relationship building it all comes down to strong communications and understanding the specifications and the requirements of each project so uh, traditionally it's it's through a lot of meetings uh, calling in the, the subcontractors to, to come in and meet with the builder to go over the specifics of the project uh, and understanding and it, it gives the, the builder then the, the chance to see that that is a, a, the right sub, uh, subcontractor for a project that is someone that they can work with during the course of the construction to solve the problems that they will encounter along the way. Uh, when COVID happened, it launched a, um, a, a new capability of working online and um, remotely. So that, that then uh, highlighted the, um, uh, the need for uh, construction software uh, to solve problems where uh, communication is recorded. There's information flowing uh, between parties uh, and giving the ability uh, for the builder then to to have that uh, efficiency of seeing terms and conditions at any one time to retrieve that information. And uh, after COVID, of course, when all of that passed over, we still have that capability and that capacity to use technology, but now it's it's coupled together with uh, relationship building and meeting again in person, but then uh, to continue that relationship on a construction software that can record they can retrieve information uh, that we, you can upload uh, any uh, RFIs or any questions or queries regarding a design where that needs to be executed on site. 